let's talk a little bit about Fanfare con Fuoco. Sure. Tell me a little bit about the history of the piece first. Well, it's it it's quite simple. And what's what's interesting here is I really I really have not seen the piece or heard the piece for at least 15 years. Oh my gosh. And I think the last group uh, that I know that did it was Evelyn's group when they were in existence. Uh-huh. And um but the the piece comes from 2002, and it was for the 20th anniversary of the Music from Angel Fire Festival in I forget if it's Taos or no, it's in New Mexico. Right. And for a long time, it was Ida Kilafian's baby, and I think she just uh, stepped down, you know, after being the founder, basically. And I was doing some things with them around that time, so they asked a bunch of composers for you know for you know, celebratory pieces. So that's, hence the title, instead of saying fanfare with fire, you know, for angel fire, I, you know, the, I like the, 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 was it a plosive with poco, you know, it's, it gives it a more, more kind of dynamic uh, sense to this, this little piece. But as you know, all too well, it's a little piece with an awful lot of notes. And um, it's a really simple idea of, you know, musically, it's kind of a fanfare announcing kind of idea. And then it's all the stuff that goes in between the announcement. And then a, sometimes music that falls away, sometimes music that, that just kind of fills up a lot of space and, 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 and kind of uh, uh, grows and disappears. Sometimes silences before this, this, uh, this fanfare idea, this very explosive idea, keeps on announcing itself in various ways. So, in for an audience that's going to hear this for the first time, um, what would you want them to? I mean, in addition to what you just said about you know, here's this fanfare, here's this moment, these these moments that keep coming back. What would you want them? Kind of the golden nugget that you'd want them to to look for, to listen for. It's a special moment for you in the, in this piece. So, uh, I mean, of course, the piece is quite short, but a lot happens, and. It's, I think the, 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 for me, one of those nuggets, as you said, is the, is the idea of something starting and then kind of fading out, fading away, and then starting again, and building different kinds of energy. Sometimes it's a kind of recoiling, it's a coiling, coiled energy. Sometimes it's a very forceful forward kind of energy. Uh, and um, also there are different kinds of uh, uh, layerings of ideas constantly, as I said, first this thing that is very forward and very direct, and then it gets kind of subsumed in all of this small activity, sometimes wispy, sometimes very, you know, uh, uh, kind of surging. Mm -hmm. So it's really, I think, to look for the different, to, to recognize the very opening as this bop, 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 as a, that's the fanfare idea. And then there's all this other stuff that kind of uh, uh, trails off of that and hearing the different ways, hearing the different spaces in the music that are created by the contrast between that opening idea and all of these other ways of, of heading away from it, heading towards it, and then ultimately kind of doing this very kind of dynamic final version of it. With so many of your pieces, how you go, like I think of, the hymn, you know, the, the air and him, that how you you go into almost a scream sometimes. That some the emotion is so raw. You that that someone so introverted, I guess is not the perfect way. Someone that is so introverted could only be the person to be able to touch that kind of raw emotion, you know. It's not the it's not the, the 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 person that wears their heart on the sleeve that can actually touch the most deeply. Mm -hmm. A wonderful composer I know who had polio as a child, and he writes some of the best rumbas you ever heard. Mm -hmm. You know, because he's yeah. never been able to dance them and be right. there. Right, right. So he touches something that, in a way that none of us could feel. So, wow. Okay, okay, that's great. Yeah. And, then, and so that continues. I mean. My studio is one of the most important places in my house. And it, there's a feeling that I have in a place where I work of a kind of uh, personal energy, a kind of uh, a place of, of solace, solitude, 
place where I can feel free to express whatever I need to, but it's, but I'm expressing it through the page to the listener. Um, of course, it's a very, um, you know, there's a long delay because I'm creating this stuff. It goes on the page where it's completely neutral, where no one's heard it. It has to be, it has to be um, um, interpreted. It has to go out into the world by live performers. And of course, this time is particularly difficult because it's all in, in different people's safe spaces if it's performed at all. There's a lot of waiting involved in this year, of course, waiting and hoping that the future again becomes us all being together again and in, in, in live situations and with direct communication rather than, 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 distanced, uh, than distanced ones. Um, but always for me, there's always been, except for what I perform myself, there's that time lag. I put it out on the paper, I put it out on the page, I experience it completely. Uh, and then it's finished, and then it needs to go on to the next stage of being spread out into the world by, by performers. Right. Yeah. And I wonder, do you think, does that change the, your perception, the, the time, the waiting time of the way you then hear the piece when you finally, well, I mean, we're still there. You still haven't been able to hear pieces that you've written during this time. Do you think that the way you view it will be different? Well, I tend, there tends to be, I tend to hold on through that first performance to what I imagined, to what I went through. Mm -hmm. It kind of remains like crystallized until it's set out into the world. And so that's why I can go into rehearsal and remember what I went through, remember the notes, remember the intention, uh, and then, you know, work with performers to project that Hopefully my notation, the, what, what I've said about the piece, what's on the page will be as direct a communication between me and the performer as possible. And that's a lot of what composing is about and experience is about, learning how to do that in the most effective way. Um, uh, but it's, it's more, once I've had that first performance, um, that's when, after that, my perspective can start to change. Uh, and that after that, I kind of allow in more, the more variety, more varieties of interpretation. Performers coming and saying, you know, what about this? Could I do this this way? But for that first performance, I like to kind of like, I as I said, I kind of tend to keep uh, uh, what I experienced initially and want to have that be the first, the first go. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, and I know when um, we commissioned the second ballad. Or ballad, which ballad. do you, you do ballad. pronounce ballad. for David when we did when when you did that? Thank you again, wonderful piece. Um, it, this was there was the wonderful thing is even though we didn't have you there for the for the first performance of it, um, your flexibility and and was wonderful, you know, in working with the performers and and you know it's you weren't afraid to make changes even before the performance, which was mm -hmm. great. You were still you know, like you're saying, you, the waiting period was still there and you were working, working through that voice and hearing and yeah. hearing the proper, I mean, I think that's wonderful that. Yeah, you know, I don't that, want to imply that it's like completely fixed object that has to be, but, but that, that, you know, of course, working with friends, working with performers, new performers, old performers, uh, uh, there is that, uh, that give and take of how can this work better? How can the, particular personality of the player, uh, and in the case of, you know, of David, something written especially for him, how can that be more, even more strongly manifested by collaboration? Yeah, and it's beautiful, you know, I mean, and how many other functions of life do we have, get that beautiful sense, if it's, if it's allowed, if the parties are able to, in t individually be confident enough to share and open open themselves to each other right. to do that. I mean, it's Very much. Yeah. such a beautiful thing we get to do as musicians. Wow, yeah. that's really great. So, I mean, this kind of goes into my other question of, you know, how this pandemic has affected you and how you think, how you feel it'll affect long-term, you know? I mean, I know you wrote a beautiful work for at least one for when 9-11 happened, a response. Um, 
No. But, uh, I'll tell you the truth. Actually, I had Corona and I had it in March and I was lucky to have a very, you know, have a relatively mild version of it. Um, I didn't have to go to the hospital. I thought I might for a couple of days, but it then kind of started to back off. Um, and it, 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 it had a tail. It has it lasted 14 days and then another 14 days basically to get rid of a cough and, and, and to be totally back to normal. Um, and between experiencing it directly and having to, as, as many, if not most of us have had to isolate, self-isolate <clears throat> um, in various ways, um, I, I wound up writing, I started a series of piano pieces, started a series of, uh, which I only partially started, I only finished two of those pieces. But one of them is specifically an elegy for victims of, of the virus, and um, that that exists as a piano piece, and I'm orchestrating as well to be a kind of um, um, memorial orchestra orchestra piece. Um, I'm also out of that experience. I'm working with a filmmaker and uh, to to hopefully, fingers crossed, create a piece, create a film using that piano piece as a background to stories of corona victims and their families. Um, so that was the most direct effect um, on my work. And out of that also came, as I said, this piece Siren for, for nine flute parts, which not only is about the sirens of ancient Greek mythology, but uh, since I was in a very direct line here in my apartment from to a hospital, um, I was constantly hearing, especially New York as being a very central, central place for the pandemic, I was hearing night and day ambulances back and forth taking people to Columbia Presbyterian Hospital. So uh, um, uh, it's been very, and, and of course, also the, 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 the how long it's gone on and how it seems endless now. And hopefully we're all hoping for that time where we can be inoculated and be safe again. Um, but it just goes on and on. So um, it's something, it's, it's pretty much impossible at this time. It affects all aspects of our, of our life and how we, uh, we move through life. Um, so it's very, um, you know, it's something we hope will never happen again and we can go freely into the future, but, but this is where we are right now. Thank you so much for an hour of your time. Sorry, I told you it would oh, only be. Oh, well, 